one of the best I've seen in one place anywhere. Hi, I'm George the Antique Nomad. Come with me as I wander the country in search of valuable vintage, amazing antiques, and cool collectibles. We'll buy, sell, and trade at antique malls, shops, and shows, estate sales, flea markets, thrift stores, anywhere people go to find really interesting things that just aren't made anymore. So come on, let's go. Hey everyone, it's George the Antique Nomad. I am driving through Ohio. I am just slightly east of Zanesville, and I am at a compound that seems to have two different antique facilities, or else one large one. I'm not sure which yet. So this is the Route 40 Flea Market and Antique Center, and they're promising antiques. I've never been here before, so let's see what this is like. Well, immedi immediately it opens up into little rooms, and immediately we see a lot of the mid-20th century tableware that we associate with Ohio production. Very clean and well organized and nicely displayed. Here's a piece of Italian pottery that I like. Hand painted with all the vegetables. They'll have to do an update on this now. This was a guide to the British monarchy today when today was 1981. Right before the royal wedding. And right after the Silver Jubilee. Of course, I like the happy face and the candle-holding dog, but this guy back here looks like it's Czech, and it looks like a small version of those Art Deco birds by Erfila that are really very collectible. $20. Seems like a pretty good price. This one, however, is Artistic Pottery. Artistic was out of Los Angeles area, but this is a response to the being cut off from European ceramics because this is a very, very derivative piece based on the Erfila. Czechoslovakian made Art Deco bird picture, pictures that were very popular just shortly before this would have been made in the 40s. Charlton decoration is definitely popular on Westmoreland pieces as well as the Fenton pieces. These are priced from 68 for the large down to looks like only $20 on the small. That actually might be worth picking up at that price and the candle holders are 24 Nice shelf full of jadeite. Here you see two different kinds of grilled plates. The ones with the round center sell for $50 to $70. The triparts are about half that price. <clears throat> Those are Fire King. And then this is Fenton's Jade. You notice it's a little darker. This was done in the 1920s. And this piece is only $25, which is about 35% below retail price. There is a very hard piece of McCoy to find. It is the Republican elephant holding victory depends on you. This would have been around the time of Wendell Wilkie running for office in the 1940s. That is priced at $65, hard piece to find. These are Shawnee pottery, these bookends here. One painted out and one not. These were experimental, it believes. I think they were doing them as a pattern study and they are priced at $4.50 for the pair. Very interesting piece. I, it doesn't look like anything I can think of them ever having actually made. And then, of course, we have to show Elsie the cow and her calves. These are rubber heads that a lot of people who collect the Russian Santas and things maybe have not seen before. Larrabee and Lobelia are the twins. This space has a lot of old kid stuff, and this is looking like the right vintage for the collector today. X-Men and pink-haired troll cowboys. Character glasses, these are only $4.75 a piece, and that's actually a pretty low price on Elmer Fudd, but on the other hand, then the set of two Tom and Jerry for the pair are $35, and they do vary in value. Some of these are a little more uncommon. Underdog, he was a favorite of mine as a kid. Robotics. These actually are pretty great. These are 1980s. There were a bunch of different things you could build that were robots that could be controlled remotely, and they can sell for about $100 a piece if everything is complete. There's a lot of accessory pieces that go with them as well. All of them are worth looking for if you are out there hunting for stuff in the vintage marketplace. This is neat. It is a somewhat portable AM-FM radio with a turntable. 
This was about as portable as it got in the late 1940s and early 50s. This is a temple and it is priced at $75. This is a pretty piece that says that it glows in black light and I believe it would. This is Dragoon Pattern by Cambridge Glass, which was made not far from here. Cambridge is the about an hour east of here. Very pretty piece, only $40. I would think that if someone saw that under a black light, they might spring for it at 65 to 75. Well, this one's having a sale and I actually have a half empty van because I had to take the rental truck back to Kentucky to unload. So, hmm, we'll take a look here. I like the antique show here today sign. That, however, does not seem to be for sale. The furniture is actually the best looking stuff in this space. I don't see a lot that I find even old. A lot of this looks older than it is when you get up close to it. I like this Navajo weaving display. It's only $15 and someone went to great lengths to show all the different things they used and what went into what. And I find it rather fascinating. And for that price, I think it's just interesting enough. If it's not falling apart too much, I think I might take that west. I know I have a viewer in Arizona who is very familiar with these methods. And you can see the various flowers that they use to derive the dyes. And then each strand takes you to a part of that weaving that was made using these dyes. The only problem with it is unfortunately there seems to have been a little bit of decay and falling apart in the middle here. But it is rather incredible to think that all of the colors that go into Navajo weavings came from these plants. Very nice little oak wash stand priced at $125. That's a very reasonable price for that piece. Little blue vase here for $12 is Fenton. That's certainly a good price. Might have to take that. We are seeing people starting to collect these out of the 80s. This is a sampler and it's just all sorts of stories, isn't it? Talking about uh, having gone from Park Avenue and then Quinn ended up on South Shore Drive in Chicago. So she was living pretty large. I love the old root beer sign. That's $49.99. I'm trying to convince myself I need it don't know whether I can double my money on it because it's an old handmade thing, but it's so 30s and it's got great aging and good color, so I'm tempted. Disc go cases were a thing in the 70s. They want 25 a piece on these. I see them priced about that in a lot of stores these days. Let's say you could take all of your 45s and these come with the 45s, so you get 65 45 RPM records and a disc go case. Seems like a pretty good deal, to tell you the truth. I used to pick these little wire shelves up for about $10 a piece. Now they're asking $30 and $40, and I can see why, because shelving is something everybody in this business needs more of. Photo album with the Chieftain. That's from Delaware, Ohio. Let's see. Ooh, this seems like a deal. Pool balls. Now, I do have a set I've been trying to sell for a while, but I've been trying to get 50 for mine, and it's the last of five sets. I sold all the other ones for 50. This one's $12. I think I should get it. Aramith balls are what they're called. It's a Bakelite-like plastic, so it has that yellowing of Bakelite, but they were made in Belgium. And for that price, yes, I'll take them. This is a pretty hard robot to find essentially does similar to what a Hot Wheel would have done. The prices on the Roseville are good, especially this Zephyr Lily vase, which I find very likable. It's one of my favorite patterns. It's got such an Art Deco shape and style and background. 70 bucks, not bad. In fact, all of these are $70 each. These discs often sell for about $25, as this one is, and they're really fun to use for decorating. I've even seen modernists paint them bright colors and mount them on the walls because they have just this crazy industrial look. So, interesting thing to repurpose. These teeny little child's deck chairs are cute. They're only $19.99 a piece. This is a fire alarm cover. Now, if it was the whole cottage fire alarm, this thing would be worth about $150. But this is just a wall cover. Even so, at $27, anything related to firefighting tends to sell very, very well. 
and I have a feeling that this might well go for that price. It's got all of its original gut. So I think, strangely enough, I'm probably going to end up buying this thing. These were made back in the day, the day being the 50s, by IBM in New York. Okay, I'm in love. Look at these stools, these bar stools. At 30 bucks a piece, they're a steal, but they're so perfect, I'm a little suspicious. So let's see if we can tell. Okay, well, this one's got a little bit of wear in the vinyl, so that actually seems legit. They spin fine. I think we have to look at the construction underneath to really tell. There's our old tag. Well, I'll be. These are really vintage. These are so cool for this price. These will sell in 10 seconds in Florida. Now the question is, do I take all three or do I leave the one that has a little bit of damage? It's minor damage, and of course if someone needed three bar stools, they'd rather have three. This one has a little bit of damage too, so now it's really a question of me deciding what condition I can live with, but they're so inexpensive and the look is great. Maybe I'll get all three and just use a little bit of colored pen to tone them out a little bit. And I'll mark that they've been retouched or that two of them have been retouched slightly. But yeah, I like these a lot. This guy is really cool. $24.99 multicolored. He looks English. I haven't seen him before and he's got embossing I feel under my fingers. Okay, that's the tree. Oh. New Hyde Park, New York. Sorens did the music box, but I bet the jug is English. We can't really tell because it was done for Sorens, so we only see their label. That's really kind of fun. I wonder what he plays. Well, he plays How Dry I Am, and I don't know if that's copyrighted, so we're just going to move on, but that is a cute little thing. Tool collecting might seem like the province of people who like to use tools, men and women who are actually handy, but some people just like them because they're interesting looking and they like to arrange them and display them. And I've seen that in a lot of different houses and garages. Here's an example of a whole lot of different kinds of wrenches. Extra points if you can tell me what each one of those do. Now these big planes here with these extra braces are flooring planes. Planes were all made for specific reasons, and the more elaborate they are, the more expensive they typically are. Oh boy, here's another one of these fluting machines from the 1870s. This one's priced at 65 The last couple I've bought in the 45 to 50 range I've been able to sell for 100 This is a crown. It's the one that we tend to see the most. It was patented in 1873, as it says there. And the important thing is that it's got both rollers because you would take one off to put on the next. So it does seem like it's complete. I'm tempted. I might, I might end up taking another one home with me. Something we see in this part of the country fairly often that we don't see in other parts of the country as much. So they sell better there. This is the Victor four-hole choker mouse trap. You know the old adage about if you build a better mousetrap, the world will come running to your door. Well, apparently four mice will as well, all at the same time, and not notice that three other mice have already come to their doom there. It seems unlikely to me. I would think mice would be that bright. An Albo tank sight scope. This is pretty neat. It's Mark Hershetta, which was one of the primary suppliers to the war effort. It's only $30. I would think any sort of a scope that you can see around. Let's see if it works. Yep, sure enough, I can see the camera. So I think this is cool. This might be another thing to buy. This plunger is actually a laundry plunger. Before you had agitation in washing machines, you had to provide it yourself. And this thing would have been the thing to do it. You can see by the way it's shaped on the bottom that it is not for... Things like toilets, of course. This is the Economy Washer, made in Freeport, Illinois. And that is what it looks like, because that way the water would recirculate through and you could keep agitating your clothes until the dirt teased out of them. Electric laundry is a really, really wonderful invention. Well, I am having a lot of fun here so far. There is a lot to see here. I'm finding stuff, and the prices are good, and the merchandise is interesting. If you are finding this video interesting, please do click the thumbs up to like it. And if you want to be notified of future videos, all you have to do is subscribe. It does not cost you a dime. 
It just lets YouTube know you're out there so that when we're doing things, we can let you know that we're doing them. Then you can click the bell and be notified of future videos and other events. The well, soccer ball still looked like this in the 80s. I gave this one a header walking under it. <laughs> and this is when this was made. This is made in Taiwan. It's $49. I'm kind of tempted by it. I do love the sport. It'd be a great man cave thing. Very pretty vintage print here. Looks rather like an R. Atkinson Fox with the mountain in the background and the flowers, although I don't see his signature. He worked under various pseudonyms, but I don't actually see a signature of any sort on this. Love the spaghetti pole lamp, of course. Who doesn't? Let's back off so you can see it better. Isn't that the neatest thing? Tension pole. Three-way lamp. They want 300 for it. Nowadays, that is not a bad price for that. Completely fair if you were into it. And then the milk glass one is priced at 115 but I'd rather have this guy. Now, this is also a flea market, so I don't expect everything to be old, and there are a lot of newer items as well. Miami of Ohio. I am 164th Miami tribe Native American, believe it or not. Okay, this is a bowl that looks like Desco wear, but is much newer because it weighs about a third as much as the 1970s originals did. Love the bright yellow top on this. Very simple utility cabinet priced at $95. The McCoy Frog is only 10 and that makes me think he has to have damage because we're in the McCoy area. It does say as is on the tag, but can we find the as is? Sometimes things that look like as is on McCoy can be factory flaws because it wasn't very well made, but there it is. It has been colored in. That's why the chip wasn't apparent at first. Darn. Oh well, the dealer is being honest with us at least. I just got a bunch of Chinese checker sets, but I need to put the checkers with them. Let's see if we can identify this picture. It looks like something done by Mohawk. Oh yes, and there it is, Mohawk Liqueur. Someone made that for Mohawk Liqueur, and I'm not sure which company did these. It could actually have been Hall China because they did a lot of this sort of stuff, but it could also have been Shawnee because they were doing those glazes at that time. Here's a sort of a teal grip okay. for the hull oven proof. I have someone who is looking specifically for saucers, and here they've got these really great TV trays. These are really hard to find. They have them priced at $155 for the set of four with the mugs, and that's probably about right. That's under $40 a set. TV trays like this were made in the late 50s in a lot of dinnerware patterns and they all tend to be less common pieces that go for a premium now. This booth is 75% off. They have a lot of dinnerware. Some nice patterns. This is an old falls draft pattern, for example. I don't know whether I need anything like this, but I'm going to take a look. There is just the bottom for the piece that I have sitting up at the counter. I like the Westmoreland when it's painted. I seem to do better with it. There is a nice bowl down here that looks like it might be RS Prussia, an old mold. It certainly has the right design on the bottom to be an RS Prussia blank, and especially the shaping in the sides, but it's not decorated very carefully, and that makes me think it might be a knockoff. This is probably Nippon. I wish they would not put big heavy tape across the top. That will take this paint off and ruin the piece. It's too bad. It's a nice little Nippon dresser jar. There's the false graph grapevine pattern. They have a bunch of false graph here. They've got garden party. Treasure craft made some stuff to go along with the garden party line for them. Yorktown, which of course, this is where there would be some money, is to look for Yorktown and some of the most popular patterns and just stick to the serving pieces only. And I might spend a little bit of time doing that. There are certain things that'll sell outside the line. You don't have to collect it, for example, to understand the point of the bread bowl here. So I think I will pick up a few of these pieces. I know a lot of people stay away from Yorktown because a lot of the basic stuff is slow to sell, but the serving pieces and completer pieces are still in demand by people who didn't get to fill out their sets before they were discontinued. I just got a bunch of this rooster and roses. I probably have most of these pieces or else I'd be tempted to get more. And usually say early provincial on them, hand painted. 
And there's a bunch of blue onion as well. These are iron art from Japan, but it's seven pieces. Now they wanted $56 for the seven pieces, but it's 75% off. What is that? Under $15 for the whole set? At that price, they may just come with me. And then tea rose is another very popular false graph pattern. I haven't really dabbled in this one, but again, I would think the same rule would apply. Look for the serving pieces. This guy, who's now going to be $7, probably worth buying, although I have a pair right now already. So we'll spend a few minutes and see if there are some things in here that make sense to buy at this big discount. Someday we will all want to have this display in our store to put all of our 1980s and 90s modern stuff on. Long after they did Lou Ray pastels, Taylor Smith and Taylor did this Granada pattern. This is one of the last things they did. It's very 1970s. I like the colors and the style definitely seems very much of the period. The prices are good on it. It's just, I have to say, I haven't seen anything in this pattern before. So it makes me think that it might be a little difficult to match. Granada is the line and Matador is the pattern. There was definitely a lot of interest in what I guess I would call Moorish revival designs in the 1970s, in part because it, the 200th anniversary of San Diego happened in 1969 and all of the other coastal California cities that were founded during the Spanish missionary days all followed suit within a few years. So in California particularly, there was a lot of interest in these styles. This French Majolica is very likable. I sold an English piece yesterday in my live sale with Misty from Thrifter Junker Vintage Hunter, and it had a very empty background. The French tended to have a very lavish background and they tended to like to do birds. It's not clear which company made this piece, but at $25, there was a time this would have sold instantly at this price and it's very good price even today. Look at this guy. I haven't seen this advertising piece before. Green giant niblets with the giant right on there in his shorty leaf outfit. If that thing was any shorter, you could see his tendrils. Norman Rockwell was such a phenomenon with older people who remembered his pictures growing up with him as he illustrated the Saturday Evening Post that in the late 70s there was a wild frenzy of making collector plates and little figures depicting Norman Rockwell scenes. They were very cute. The people who bought them were all older folks at that time. That generation has left us and there are really not new people picking these up. That's why you're seeing prices of three and five dollars on them. Now this booth has what appears to be a whole lot of random glass, some nice pink depression, a lot of low pieces, things that might sell at some price if they were inexpensive. Like this big Mayfair bowl used to be a lot more money than $20. I am actually going to look this up because this pattern was valuable enough in its time that this big bowl might be worth buying at that price. A lot of these pieces are not really very definite as to their pattern or maker, but they do have some cute little things like these little sweet pink, very tiny mini swung vases. They're only six dollars each. I think I'll get them in that color. There's this set here now. Unfortunately, Sierra chips really easily. There's a chip right there. This would be a 30 or 40 dollar set for 10 dollars if it wasn't for the chips. You'd have to look at all these bowls to see if it was worth getting it for those. There's the platter. This serrated edge is so cool looking, but it did tend to chip if you weren't careful. So I'm gonna have to look those up too. But the one I'm most interested in is right here because this is a bunch of really not very interesting 1980s satin glass, except for the Viking patio light right in the middle, which is only $6. That is a hard color to find in that, and I am very excited to get it. So we're going to look at this great piece here. I always like these double bases with the fenestration between them. This one's 75 That's about a right price. This one is Roseville, actually. Well, Zanesville is the home of a lot of these potteries, so I guess maybe everything on this shelf down here is also Roseville. You can see the paper label that preceded the stamp label, so if you see a piece of Roseville, it may not necessarily be marked that. Oh, this is Tuscany, not Carnelian, I see, from the early 30s. 45 for that pair seems really great, but I sold Jeffrey at Real Nifty Vintage, the console bowl that went with it, so... This set is only a hundred with the three pieces. That's not bad. 
the whole regal parrot is 27.50 he's a great looking guy let's see what other good pottery we have here only 20 dollars on the mccoy triple lily that might be worth getting this little bittersweet in the gray is 55 that's a roseville pattern little shawnee geisha here and i think this is a wall pocket or just a regular planter that one's only twelve dollars a couple of whole pine cone okay now these are rosane one of the last of the rosane lines and then you've got a bunch of these different roseville pieces up here so they have some nice pottery and the prices range from retail down and there are a few pieces cheap enough to buy for resale in my opinion they also have some pattern glass lanterns that are a little bit more unusual they're still mainly clear but this one's got a different shape at the base this one with the drapery is 50 dollars the double handle is 90. this one's only 35 and that is quite old you can see it's turning purple from sunlight $200 on the pom-pom tree. If you see the old aluminum Christmas trees, the pom-poms on the end always sell for more. And you can see why, because it gives such a fullness to it. And then there's this cue set for $42 with all the birds this screen painted out of the 40s or 50s. That's an anchor hawking set, and that's really cute. This Humpty Dumpty is by Brush Pottery. It's had a restoration on the lid. That's why it's $55 instead of $100. But it's a neat piece that you don't see too often as is this one this is actually from the rocketeer which was not one of the more successful disney movies but treasure craft did this job for them and this was supposed to be the restaurant it looked like a dog so it says tamale and ice cream and eats on it 81.95 if it didn't have a hairline below the lid that would actually be a pretty fair price for it. when you see all these slits in a woman figurine that means it was made as a napkin holder you would fold the napkins and put them on the table this one's a Lillian Vernon, so it's not particularly old. It's a reproduction of the ones that we saw in the 1960s. They've got some vintage vinyl here, as well as a really cool four-speaker sound jacks and stereo unit here that does not appear to be for sale, unfortunately. When 50s Western really took off, there started to be reproductions of Western dinnerware. This is, or fantasy items, I should say. This is Sky Ranch. This is 1980s and 90s. This is not something done originally. It is a nice graphic, though. Next to it, we've got this Stro Beer sign. $40 is pretty good if that lights up. I have to say, nowadays, I should probably think about it for that price. There was a time I would have thought that was retail, but prices have certainly gone up on those. This is a whole lavabo, or wall font but it is missing the piece that goes underneath well shawnee sure had a lot of fun in the early 40s when they were making this stuff we have little boy blue on the left and little bow peep on the right i think those are priced at 30 a piece there was a time that would have been a bargain price i think people still really appreciate shawnee for its whimsy 15 on the flower cart vendor that's a good price and here's a different version of bow peep this one is a reproduction later in time. Look at the difference on the bottom. It's pretty white. It hasn't seen a lot of use. This one is a lot heavier. Different color of clay. So I am suspicious of the one on the right. A bunch more Shawnee as we come down here the old mother hubbard teapot a lot of salt and pepper shakers a lot of their figurals including the cowgirl for 15 in the back there and the clock wall pocket i always like but i'm leading you down here because i wanted to show you this this is way down on the bottom shelf sometimes it's good to shop the bottom shelves if you can because you'll find things like this now they put it down here because they're thinking of it as nursery wear but i look at it and i see moon and star on stars in a vase form and people love things that are star shaped and it's a wall pocket and it is a shawnee line i recognize it's a little bit crude and it's a factory second you can see the glaze missed a foot there and that is something to consider because someone else may say oh no that's a chip it's not it's just a factory second 
but I think it's good enough overall for ten dollars. I'm going to go ahead and get that guy. And this is an advertising magnifier, so you would actually take this and use it to magnify everything. Obviously, it would work better for newsprint than it does for large items at a distance. The advertising is interesting. It's only seven fifty. Here's a refrigerator water jar from the 1930s or 40s, priced at 65, along with a metal coffee mill, patented 1905, same price. These are good. This is Shawnee Kenwood. Kenwood was an up-and-coming Cincinnati suburb in the 40s and 50s, and so when Shawnee did a more modern line, they decided to call it Kenwood in honor of that, I believe. These little lobster dishes usually sell pretty well. $15 does not seem like a high price for that. It might even be a buyable price. Since we're in pottery country, just have to show this little guy. I haven't seen him before, but he is also Shawnee. He has that slightly italicized A so that we can tell, even though I've never seen him, I know he's Shawnee. And sure enough, it says he's Shawnee on the tag. $85 on him. I think he's a pretty scarce one. And then there's this gal. I have always liked this Shawnee head vase with the Polynesian girl. Had one in my own collection. And yes, they called it Polynesian girl. I realized that we wouldn't call women girls these days. If they did a dealer discount, I'd be tempted because this one I usually can get about $60 for. This guy is very worn, but Harlequin put out an entire line of these little gold painted animals in the 40s, little ceramics. It's worth finding a little reference on that and studying them because they are not marked and they are often sold very cheaply, but they are pretty collectible. This one's marked 15 because the condition's bad, but believe me, they can sell for more than that. Malted milk containers and jars sell for premiums. This one's 45. If it was a canning jar, that size would be half that price. So look for malted milk. Rubber Snoopies for about $8 each out of the late 60s, early 70s. Unfortunately, this bowl is not for sale. I don't really understand why it's here if it's not for sale. And then they've got some old sprinkler heads, and this is a collectible category all its own. This is a Rain King, and they like these unusual designs. At $25, this probably is worth buying. And then they have these styles up here that we see a little more commonly, but only 15 on the triple. And then there's this, which is a mist master. Say that three times fast. Where the water comes in there and then sprays out as a mist. So there were lots of different ideas about sprinkler heads, and people collect them because they're interesting looking. Well, Heise went out of business in 1957, but their molds were obtained and controlled by various companies over the years. And that's why you will see some of their items in other colors later on. For Longeberger, they were made the big horses in emerald. Dalzell, which revived the Viking name for a while in the 1990s and early 2000s, did this pink color, this ruby one, was actually signed by various members of the Heisey family involved with their glass museum. And then the Flying Mare was done by Dalzell. And some of these were very, very short production, and some of them are rather valuable. You can see prices here from 175 to 595. They also have a really amazing Fenton Burmese Perrin for 795 up there. So they've got some good glass in here, which is not surprising because we are in, in glass country. They also have several pieces by Wick Rice Carver. And I showed this the last time I was in the Zanesville area because Rick Weiss Carver has become very well known in the pottery field. And there's some variation here. You have painted surfaces, but then this one's intaglio with the scraffito, the etching below the surface level. And then some large pieces and figural pieces down on the bottom here. And then the showcases. There's some really beautiful things in this showcase section, and I'll point out some highlights here. I personally really do like the Gonder vase here. Most of his designs are, oh, a little heavy in my opinion, but you'll see this signature. And I have to say this large with the 
the starfish and the shell shape is a really interesting piece for 95. This is a Gonder seagull for 150. And then here is Gonder's ladyhead figure. I think this is one of the best pieces that Laden Gonder designed, in my opinion. And at 115, I think it's a relatively good deal for that particular pottery. Gonder also made this amazing pink panther. And this one's priced at 195 that flambe glaze. It's very hard to find. This is a very rare Gonder mermaid. I have to say that this collection of Gonder is one of the best I've seen in one place anywhere. So it's fun to get to show you a whole bunch of stuff. This Arabian Nights, the yellow shaped vase on the bottom there. The elephant is a lamp base. That's really something special. You see this interesting gold crackle glaze on the Madonna figure. And then below we see some of their 50s modern shapes and designs, including this crazy relish dish that looks like a giant amoeba. I like that a lot. The imperial cat in black, and then this wonderful experimental standing frog figure. This is one of a handful of these that were made. This qualifies as actually being called rare, and it's priced at $4.50. And then you see the women in the turban as candle holders. A really neat variety, and I have to say this makes me respect Gonder much more to see so many different interesting things by him in one place. Then there's this. Now this was done in 2014. There's a lot of studio potters that are still working in Zanesville. This one says it's Martha Grover and it's a flower brick and $95. I have to say it's a very fantastic shape. We think of Robinson Ramsbottom as primarily yeah, being so. production pottery and a lot of kitchenware, but they did some neat artwork to okay. these very tall vases with this really elaborate floral painting that reminds me more of Spanish or Italian pottery are good examples. Then there's this mottled glaze floor vase here. These are pretty incredible, and these are all pricing in the six to eight hundred dollar range for these larger pieces. Of course, we can't forget. Hull. Hull did a line called Creststone on the left there that was an unusual combination of glazes, usually drip glazes. In this case it also has a spatter effect. What a fun section of wall pockets too. The Hull Chinese, the Weller Ivy Tan in the middle here. This piece here is Roseville. The pink one was Weller. Brush did this owl. Peters and Reed did this floral vase, so they just about have one from each of the major area potters. Weller Silvertone. I have had the bowl in Silvertone. I've never had that wall pocket. And then this one has been professionally repaired, but it was worth doing because it's the Weller Ram, and that's a very unusual piece to find. And some more Weller while we're checking them out. Look at these really great candlesticks from the 1920s with those big, tall stick legs around the center. Those are just such a, it's called the Noval line from about 1920, and it's just such an interesting design, the proportions and all. Melrose are the great pattern in the pink, and then the blue drapery in the front here, they're only $65 for the pair. That seems like a good price. The two big vases behind are Roseville. This is a Weller Floretta vase from about 1908, and at the same time, Owens is experimenting with this piece. Look how modern this looks for 1908. That's why it's priced at $200. This was way ahead of its time. Owens was another of the Zanesville area potters. Then we have the Barcelona vases by Weller painted in the back and the Roma doorstop. That's an unusual piece. But perhaps one of the most highly regarded the Weller lines in the later years was the Hudson with all the hand painting. This is the Hudson Perfecto line. And look at the wonderful water lilies there. And then we have a tobacco humidor. This is called the Irishman, also by Weller Pottery. If you see one thing you like in Weller or one thing you don't like, keep looking because you'll find something else you like or not as you keep searching through their stuff because they had such a huge variation of wares over their history. They were the largest pottery company in the world at one point. 
This is Marengo, this orange luster in the back here from the 1920s. Mascota vase with the girl sitting on it. That's a hard one to find. And then the climbing squirrel. We've got the girl with the watering can. I'm more personally a fan of the Brighton Bird flower flag on the left, and especially this Ardsley Iris vase. I always thought that was a really interesting design for a pocket vase. But the piece that may be the best deal in here is this Howard Pierce from California. You don't see solid glaze Howard Pierce very often. I haven't seen the frog on the mushroom, and it is a flower frog mushroom, and it's $45. And I couldn't go without showing this Brush McCoy turtle. That is fantastic, 16 inches. They have it priced at $5.95. I have to think that's a very hard piece to find. And yet over here, this McCoy fine form vase, huge is only $45 next to the McCoy barrel set here that is significantly more with the water cooler and the four mugs, it's $195. This is neat because this spice cabinet was given away as an advertising premium, so you can tell it's pretty basic. It's not even particularly square. They just sort of stenciled the names of the spices, but they also stenciled their information that you could go to Frohawk Furniture Company on 4th Street and get spice cabinets and by extension anything else you needed for the house. So that was pretty clever of them and that's interesting to people now. It's 135 because of that added interest. And here is a Persian Kaleem saddlebag priced at $2.95. When they're in good condition and have good color and age, they can go for this price. I had two last year. One was in pretty good condition and one wasn't but they did both sell. Woodsy Owl was a new character to help us remember not to pollute when we were kids. And he came out in, I believe around 1971. This is the McCoy cookie jar that came out around the same time. Not a common jar to see, $250. Ericsson Glass is a company that made things in America that had a lot of controlled bubbles in them. So if you see controlled bubbles in shapes that don't seem like Murano, Ericsson is definitely a possibility. So look into that. Here's the trout vase by Fenton. This was a very short-lived line on the Burmese late in their production, 185. I think I got a similar price to that for mine. Mine was a little larger. Now we see a lot of the whole Corky pig bank. I can honestly say I've never seen it as a bowl before. And I have not seen the yellow glaze either. So that is an unusual piece. Wait, and the good ceramics here just go on and on. The Brush McCoy Double Frog is a great piece. The McCoy Donkey Pitcher is very hard to find. See, they were equal opportunity. That is a reference to the Democratic Party. Even this one with the butterfly and the rhinestone stuck on. The chrysanthemums are good. Lots of fun pieces. We have a couple of reticules hanging here. They both look like they are losing some beads, unfortunately. I haven't seen this exact one before, the modern Miss washing machine. And there she is, washing her doll clothes. $69, that's about what these seem to sell for now. But this one's a different model than I'm used to. You guys have a great day. Too. I was very happy with what I found at the Route 40 flea market, so now if I get this way again, which I'm sure I will, I have another place to stop outside of Zanesville, Ohio. We are to the east on the Old East Pike. I'm George the Antique Nomad. Thanks for coming along with me. This is a lot of fun. I love it when I get to discover someplace new and show you folks. So if you get to the area, well, you can stop on through here as well. Check me out on the social media links you see in the description, and we'll see each other soon with more adventures in the wonderful world of antiques and collectibles. So take care and bye for now. Thanks for joining me again in the fun and fascinating antique community here where online meets the real world. Please click the subscribe button below, click the bell to be notified when new videos upload, leave a comment below, and hit thumbs up to like this video. Links to our online social media and our items for sale are in the description. This is George at the Antique Nomad. Bye for now!